Dr. J. Ah, uh, Mr. Bell, how are you? I am well indeed, from the high desert and the great American Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, 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 maybe they'd know this voice. Maybe, uh, well, hold, hold on a moment. Uh, I've got another voice they might recognize. Uh, see if you know this voice. Are we ready? Uh, let's see. Hold on a moment. Uh, I want to. I want to play something for them. Here it comes. Want to take a ride from the high desert and the great American Southwest? You should know that voice. All right, so we got some questions first. I think you should tell them about the show and, of course, the Time Traveler special that nobody else does. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to give them a little inside information because it's now so close that it doesn't matter. Uh, instead of doing what every other radio show or whatever does on the air, for example, they have news up at the top of the hour from ABC or whatever, we decided that, what do we care about the regular news? Yeah, maybe if, you know, something has collapsed and we've lost a city or something like that, then fine. But after that, what we're going to do is a five-minute paranormal newscast that sounds just like ABC News, and we're going to do it at the bottom of each hour. So... <laughs> Something a little different there. And uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of different things. And we're going to do a whole bunch of new things. It's going to be a blast. I am free at last. <laughs> there, <laughs> One of the big things I think we should talk about, Art, is the fact that, of course, your podcasts are available for just $5 a month, just like several others. But yours actually have something different that nobody else does. The wormhole. Uh, well... There's two things. Look, first of all, the show is free to everybody. And I mean everybody worldwide. The show is free. Now, we are depending on people like are listening to me right now to join and, yes, get the podcast, uh, which is available, you know, any time of day or night. And you can go back also in the archives and download those and listen to them if you missed a show. But, yes, we also have uh, the wormhole. Now, that means people who are members can send me messages during the show. And if we've got a, you know, if you've got a really good question for the guest, you can fire it off and it shows up here instantly. So, yeah, it's probably worth becoming a member. And remember, when you become a member, you're supporting all the people who can't, you know, can't afford to cough up even five bucks. So we hope you'll join. Thank you. When Without I, further ado, we're going to do some questions. Okay. When I Hold on one sec, John. When I left Sirius XM two years ago, I promised that we were going to have a free worldwide show, and that's exactly what we're going to deliver. Go ahead with any questions you've got. All right. I'm going to read you one live one, then I'm back to read one. Here's the first one. This is from Connie Sarah. Do you feel that particular families have have sightings from generation to generation to generation? Yeah. There, well, I feel that way. There's no doubt about it. I've had, I don't know how many emails from people who have said that uh, uh, sightings, even abductions, have followed people from generation to generation to generation. And there's probably a really good reason for that. In other words, they're probably following, uh, well, let's see, how can I put it delicately? changes they may have made in somebody's DNA makeup. I think a lot of people in this room definitely would have to agree with that. All right, here comes our first live questioner. This happens to be Winston. Go ahead, Winston. How important is uh, spiritual ascension for UFO disclosure? Uh, I think that Stephen Greer is more qualified to answer that. Remember, I'm just a, a talk show host. Um, I th think Stephen Greer is leaning in that direction right now, and we're going to have him on the show. He has pretty much, I understand, given up on disclosure because as far as he's concerned, it's already happened. Uh, they're already here. So uh, he's turned his uh, attention, shall we say, toward exactly what you're talking about. Um, I, so I guess important. Thank you. 
All right, here comes another written question. This is from Harvey Glenn. I am a Vietnam veteran. I had numerous sightings in the country, including an object that was football long, football field long, I'm assuming he's wrote, and looked like a chandelier. Were there any other sightings of UFOs in Vietnam that you knew about being a Vietnam veteran yourself? No, I, I never uh, or rarely had my eyes on the sky uh, in Vietnam, frankly. I was a lot more concerned about what was directly ahead or behind me. Um, so I never saw anything in Vietnam. I have had my own sighting, a uh, big sighting, here in uh, Pahrump, Nevada. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd go so, so far as to call it a close encounter more than a sighting. Um, and I'd be glad if somebody wants to hear about it. I'd be, you know, I've explained it before, but I'd be glad to do it again. So in Vietnam, no, I had my eyes on the other guys. <laughs> okay, we got one more, another live question. This is from Rory. Rory, go ahead. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Rory. Thanks for being here. Um, in fact, I, I was going to ask a question about disclosure, but you covered that. So I was going to ask. In fact, I'm going to sneak in two questions. One about your sighting that you just mentioned. Can you tell us more about that? And the second question is, as you're out in the desert, I'd love to hear your take on George Adamski. Well, I, 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 I'm not so sure I want to com com comment on George, but I do want to tell you about the sighting. Um, it was a very serious sighting. And here's what happened. Um, my wife, uh, Ramona, and myself at the time were on the way uh, back from Las Vegas at about... I don't know, 10.30, quarter to 11 at night, something like that. And we were, I would guess, about three quarters of a mile, maybe a mile from home. And Ramona said, what the hell is that? And she saw light coming up behind the vehicle. And I said, no idea. She said, stop the car, stop the car. So I stopped it. And let me tell you about that night. There was about a three-quarter moon maybe more than three quarters, and it was out here in the desert where we are. It's so quiet that you could hear crickets, you know, a quarter of a mile away. I mean, that's really quiet, right? No sound at all, no highways, no road noise, nothing. So we were in a, a little car. We stopped it, got out, and oh, my God, um, from the rear, coming direct, I mean directly at us, here is this giant triangle and when I say giant triangle, I mean really big. When this thing came over us, the stars went away, the moon went away, everything went away. It could not have been more than 150 feet above us. It was metallic. It actually had lights on it on all three corners of the triangle. And it was deadly silent. I mean you could still hear the crickets a quarter mile away. There was no propulsion. There was nothing. And this thing went directly over our head. I went into, as did she, a state of shock. I mean, we were just in shock. We stood there and we watched this darn thing go out across the Pahrump Valley and head toward what we know to be as Area 51. Never a sound from it. It could not have been going more than... 30, 30, 40 miles an hour, very slow. And we came home and I, you know, I was doing at the time um, a radio show talking about this kind of thing. So I came home and I tried to decide if I was going to tell anybody about it uh, because it would seem hokey. It would seem fake. It would seem ginned up or something. I, I Anyway, I finally decided I was going to talk about it on the air, which I did. I reported it to MUFON, but a week later, one week later, there was an article in the uh, Prump Valley Times, our local newspaper here, and it said a whole bunch of people in the Prump Valley had seen the same thing I did and uh, called the newspaper. Well, the newspaper turned around and called uh, the Air Force Base in Las Vegas, and they... <laughs> They told the newspaper that, yes, indeed, there had been a secret mission that had overflown the Pahrump Valley that night, but that it was a C-130 aircraft. Now, I was, in, I was in the Air Force. I flew in C-130s. 
if a C-130 had flown 150 feet above me, my teeth would have rattled. So it was a joke. What they said was an absolute ridiculous lie and a joke. Uh, but there you are. Uh, we were, th thank God, not the only ones who saw it. Um, but we didn't know that until later. And this thing, <laughs> this thing was defying gravity. There's no, t it either was floating and it was not a balloon because it was metallic, had no apparent propulsion, therefore it was defying gravity. And it was gigantic. So you tell me what it was. And not to mention the fact that a C-130 is not traveling 30 to 40 miles per hour. Oh, please. 150 feet above ground level silently. Oh, please. <laughs> Have you ever, if you've ever been in or near a C-130, uh, you, you just laugh. When we were talking the other day about this sighting, you mentioned that it was so close to you, you could have thrown a rock at it. Yeah. Yeah, if, if I hadn't been in shock, uh, it was that close that I felt like I could have grabbed a rock and thrown it at the thing. This is what I thought about later. It was that close. I mean, it com it just covered us. It was gigantic. All right, let's go to our next live question. Jim, please come up. Go ahead. First of all, Art, to us, you're more than just a radio host. You're, a, you're an opinion leader. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like you to comment on, we're living in a world of reality TV and controversy. Who do you think is creating more problems for UFO disclosure? The negativists, the noisy negativists, as um, St. Friedman calls them, or actually the investigators themselves? Well, as, as you all must know, uh, the UFO community is one that loves to fight with itself. So we definitely cause problems. But, and it's a big but, uh, it's all assisted by our government. Now, many of you will have heard about the, uh, the hacking of, uh, well, maybe you haven't heard. You heard Wall Street went down the other day, right? Yes. Everybody, yeah, you heard that. Yep. Uh, along with the United Airlines and the Wall Street Journal webpage and so forth and so on. Um, I wonder how many of you know, probably quite a few because you guys are plugged in, that uh, the hacker group Anonymous, the night before, sent out a message on, on one of the Anonymous um, uh, sites that, uh, gee, Wall Street uh, is going to have a problem tomorrow. Now, did anybody anywhere in the mainstream media touch that? No, not a chance. So... It's my view that our government tells us through the news media what we want to hear and nothing else. What they want us to think is what they tell us. So there's disinformation coming from the government and there's plenty of disinformation in the UFO community itself. And I think this you is thankfully why we have alternative media sources such as Dark Matter Digital Network and YouTube and other sources. Here is a written question from Crystal. What is your opinion of enclosed earth or flat earth concepts? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that's kind of my opinion, what, what you just heard. And, and the reason I say this is I had occasion to fly a supersonic uh, jet between here, actually Las Vegas, and Paris uh, in France. And I was up at 68,000 feet. And at 68,000 feet, you can readily look down at the Earth and tell, whoa, that's not flat at all. That seems to be a, a circle. And now, of course, you can't see the entire circle, but at 68,000 feet, you can see enough of it to know it's definitely not flat. All right, we have another live question. For I, I want to say one more thing, John. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have some flat Earth people on the show. And I'm going to give them the opportunity to prove to me that the Earth is flat. And uh, I expect it'll be high entertainment. Uh, or you never know, maybe they'll prove it to me. Everybody just stay tuned to artbell.com so you can see the schedule so you see when that happens. That's right. Okay. Here comes Ginger with a live question. Hi, Art. Uh, Hi. I've been a big fan of yours since probably 99. I've been Thank listening you. to the radio a long time. Thank you. Um, just want to know, are you going to host any of your own events in the, out in the desert? 
You know, I've I've never been a big event guy, um, as you probably do know. I, I've been invited to a million of them, and um, it's hard for me because I I sort of express myself on the air, and I'm not as comfortable expressing myself in front of a lot of people. But that said, I just might do it. <laughs> we got one more final written question. Uh, sadly, this was written before you came on, and I know the answer, and I'm hoping you can correct. The question comes from Hiroko, and it says, what channel on Sirius XM can I listen to your program? <laughs> um, there, there presently is no channel. This is an interesting um, question, and I, I will have a couple things to say about it, and it is this. Uh, as you know, I was hooked up with Sirius XM. Uh, when I went to work for them, they told me, oh, aren't we've got a streaming service that is better than anything you've ever seen. It's worldwide. And it works really well. And that was important to me because my audience, frankly, was coming from the broadcast world. So I said, okay. Well, we got underway and people began to get dropped off every few minutes and they started to get angry. And I don't blame them. So they've, they've got a big problem with their streaming service, number one. And then number two, I found out, well, you know, it's not worldwide after all. Actually, they cover America and Canada, and the only way you can get it anywhere else in the world is to have an American credit card and an American address, and then maybe you can get an account and hear it in Timduk Timbuktu, wherever that is. So um, they kind of messed up on two levels. One, people couldn't stay connected, and two, uh, they didn't have the worldwide, worldwide uh, coverage they claimed they had. So that's what caused me to eventually say, all right, guys, here's the deal. Um, since it's not working well and everybody's getting knocked off, I want free streaming for my audience until you can get it fixed. It didn't seem like an outrageous request to me. And uh, they said no. And when they said no, I said goodbye. And that cost me two years of my broadcast life. So there you have it. Well, fortunately, you'll be back in a week. We have one more person who wants to say something new. This is Yvonne Smith, a legendary researcher, abduction specialist, hypnotherapist, so much more. Also the person responsible for today's event. Yvonne? Y Yvonne? Hi, Art. I did your show twice in the 90s. I don't know if you remember, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> but I am so thrilled that you agreed to come on to speak to our audience and to our members. And we are so looking forward to having you back and would love to be on your show at some point to talk about the abduction research. But this is just a thank you tonight because everybody here loves you. <laughs> Yvonne. All right. Yvonne. Before we go real quick, why don't we just tell everybody where they can find you, the websites, and, of course, where they can get the podcast. Well, our artbell.com. It's not really hard. Artbell.com. And if you go there, I think it says join time travelers almost right away. So we'd be glad to have you. If you can't afford it, then just listen for free, for goodness sakes. Um, I, I am so thankful to be coming back because I think that what we're all interested in, the paranormal, deserves a rational discussion. And without naming anybody, I don't think what we've got right now is rational and intelligent. And I hope I can bring that back. You absolutely will, based on the applause I've been seeing here. <laughs> Art Bell, everyone, starts a week from Monday, July 20th. DarkMatterDigitalNetwork.com, ArtBell.com. Art, any last words? Um... Well, no, just everybody uh, hang tough. It's just one more week. <laughs> All right, clearly the fans love you. Thank you very much. You have a good night. We'll good night, everybody. <laughs>